Halo MCC mods and World of Warcraft coming to Xbox, as well as Xbox giving multiplayer for Call of Duty a little more attention than Activision. And what's the next feature for Halo Infinite? Well, I'll answer those questions and a lot more within this video. So stay tuned throughout the whole thing to understand all the details. So I went to my community page here on my channel. If you guys want to catch these posts when they do go live, make sure you subscribe to keep yourself updated with all that stuff. But I went on the here, I was like, hey, do you guys have any questions about video games in general? I'll answer them on this video. If you guys want to see some more videos like this, make sure to tap that like button. It's the best way to help the video and channel within that all famous YouTube algorithm. And let's get right into it. So with the July update for the Master Chief Collection, we've been seeing the biggest talking point when it comes to the community and Halo is bringing mod content over to the console. And Dee Meranu, if I pronounce that correctly, asks, will we see the recent updates to the Master Chief Collection on PC? Have that content come over to the console side of things? And I did have a video talking about this before, but essentially, I don't think we'll see that anytime soon. On my previous video discussing it, I saw a lot of comments, people saying that, oh, it's developers are being lazy. 343 is being lazy. It's not really that. I think it's more just the amount of resources that Microsoft is willing to put into Halo. They just put as much as they can into the mod content for MCC. They even talked about in the recent blog update that they want to bring that Halo 2 E3 demo from 2003, make it playable for players. But the thing is, there's one guy working on that mod to make that functional. It's a very small team over there, especially on the dig site, is what they call it side of things. They can't bring all this cut content and bring it into the MCC via mods. So it's not like 343 made content and now you can just play it on PC right now. They give it to the community for them to modify that content to make it playable. So it's not like the PC side of thing MCC is going into matchmaking and finding Halo Online maps of like Lockout that look amazing. So you have limited resources. And another thing is that I don't really think that Microsoft wants to build out a whole team when it comes to regulating these mod contents, because the big thing is that you have the community of people who are not licensed publishers at all, making content off of copywritten material. And the only reason why it's even happening in the first place is because Microsoft and 343 are kind of cool with the idea of people making content with their IPs. I've been seeing it more and more with high name publishers and high name developers that they don't even allow mods anymore. Before, back in the early 2000s and 90s, modding was like essential. Like it was expected for, for basically every game out there. And I think the main reason why you see that is because they don't want random people out on the internet doing things with their IP that they probably don't want to see their IP being done with. Rule 34 of the internet kind of kicks in right there. Obviously, it's not just that, but you know, you give the content out to people, they'll do some weird things with it. And also, I just don't think that Microsoft wants to build out a team to where they would have to regulate all these mods coming in, right? If you're going to bring it to console, you need to make sure that that stuff that's on console is up to par. That's like almost developer quality stuff because you can't have like everything that's on the Steam Workshop. It's, you know, some of it's hit, some of it's miss, and you can just kind of uninstall, reinstall kind of easily right there. You would have to build out that entire UI section for the MCC and also then have a team that could regulate these mods. So one, have it legally work within the game to where like, yeah, this meets our terms and services and regulations when it comes to how people should make content for this Halo IP. And then also you need to build out a team that can select this content to be posted up into like an official capacity. Since the Xbox and all consoles are a closed ecosystem that's very controlled and highly regulated that you can't really have just like the public and at mass just upload to it and then whatever happens happens you can get away with that on pc because of how much of an open ecosystem it is of course a website like steam for example where most of these mods are gonna be downloaded from from the steam workshop they could just go one day and go like you know what? we don't want mods on our website anymore and that would kill the whole thing now i'm sure a lot of people are thinking like well bethesda did it with fallout 4 and i think skyrim also had it for a console as well later on and that's mainly because I think Bethesda invested that amount of time and UI and effort and people to have that available for their games at that time. But now Bethesda is under Microsoft. And I don't really know if Microsoft would be willing to shill out that cash for a feature that might not really get utilized a whole lot. I think if I remember correctly that the mod content that was on Fallout 4 for console was nice, but nothing really that would engage people to really make them use it. I heard it really wasn't updated a whole lot. Plus on Fallout 4, there was a two gigabyte limit of the amount of data you can download for mods because on the console, your hardware is strictly limited to what you have right then and there. 
On PC, you can kind of just modify however you want, have as much storage as you like. All I'm saying that there's probably a really complicated good reason why there are no mods coming to console, though I would love to see it happen. I don't expect to see it anytime soon. One of the most popular games of all time is going to be added to Xbox with this Xbox Activision merger, that game being World of Warcraft. And Prophet Regret asks, do you think World of Warcraft will ever come to Xbox? And I'm assuming he means that question is more towards the console side of thing as World of Warcraft has been a PC only experience. And we've been starting to see that this blend between console and PC communities are starting to happen far more often where it's definitely a possibility. The only thing that Xbox has right now that's something similar would be the Elder Scrolls Online, and that doesn't have cross-play either. You're either playing on PC, or you're playing on console, or you're even playing on xCloud. My biggest question would be, would WoW work on console using a controller? Because the game is fundamentally designed to be on PC, it's only, only ever been on PC, so they've never had to build out like new UI or craft the mechanics in the game in a certain way to where they could work on a controller versus mouse and keyboard. World of Warcraft did bring in controller support so you can play the game with a controller, though from what I've heard and seen that it works, but maybe not as well as it should like compared to a mouse and keyboard, but at least you can do it. Though I feel if they were gonna bring World of Warcraft to console, they probably would have done it by now. And with it being such an old long running franchise that has such complexity to it, that I couldn't imagine trying to deliver a game like that over to the console. I could just imagine there being like technical minute nightmares when it comes to trying to make something like that happen. Would I love to see it? Of course, I would love to see everyone get a chance to play every game everywhere. I mean, graphically, the game isn't that intense where it definitely could run on a Series X. And I would fully expect World of Warcraft to come to Game Pass as well, which would be massive, kind of probably in the similar way as Elder Scrolls Online. Though for it to come to console, it's probably unlikely, especially with how new this merger is going to be. They need to figure out so many ways of how Xbox is going to integrate with Activision Blizzard. And that's so many years down the way. I think what best we'll see is World of Warcraft coming to Game Pass. We've seen a recent resurgence when it comes to the Call of Duty franchise, mainly because on the Xbox side of things, the servers are fixed. They work, you can find matches. And with this new acquisition coming in here, DC3747 asks, with Call of Duty being bought out by Microsoft, do you think they're going to cater to Warzone less and cater more to main games like Modern Warfare 2, Cold War? And with the old Call of Duty games being revived, do you think those numbers will sustain or rise even more? If you guys don't know, within the Call of Duty community, it feels like a lot of the 6v6 multiplayer people are feeling rather neglected when it comes to their content and updates, even though they do get new weapons and new maps, though it always just feels like there's a Warzone focus to every update. And the reason why that is, is because you have to follow the money and definitely Warzone is making more money and is more popular than regular multiplayer. So I wouldn't expect to see the focus of the games change as well, they're still crazy profitable. I think Modern Warfare 2 is one of the fastest selling Call of Duty games of all time. Even though people love to complain about the game online, they're still playing it a ton. It's still one of the top five most played games on Xbox right now. So I don't wanna really see the business strategy of Call of Duty changing anytime soon. But one of the things we could see happen is quality of life improvements when it comes to the platform of Xbox for Call of Duty. Like we just saw with the servers being fixed, bringing in an, a huge influx of new players. And I think a lot of people realizing, oh yeah, these old Call of Duties, even though I have nostalgia for them, they definitely do have their issues with like, host migrations, playing the peer-to-peer -peer connections, overpowered setups and death streaks and all that annoying stuff that ever came with classic Call of Duty games. I would be shocked if we don't see the Call of Duty franchise come to Game Pass within like a year or so or something like that. It took about a year when the Microsoft Bethesda ZeniMax acquisition finally finished. We saw the Bethesda games come to Game Pass about a little bit less than a year afterwards. We could possibly see some monetization aspects of the game change, maybe, though I doubt that. I think it's just gonna be more on the side of just like servers working, maybe less hackers and things like that, better security, because these older games of Call of Duty, even up to Cold War, still struggle a lot when it comes to security. Like people can grab your IP address, especially in peer-to-peer -peer connection games. But I don't see things changing really just because it's been working for Activision. Why would Xbox come and change that? And when it comes to the recent resurgence, I think it's just gonna be a flash in the pan, a nice summer thing to happen because right now we're kind of in that part where we went through the spring game release 
releases that happen early part of the year we're kind of waiting for the fall and winter releases that come in later in the year so this is a great time for like this kind of update to happen to call of duty it's where people kind of jump back in they play the old games for like a month or two they kind of get some member berries going and then they just hop right back whatever the new content is coming in either for the next season for like season five of call of duty or when modern warfare 3 drops uh whenever it decides to come out it's been a bit of a rough year for halo infinite we've seen some announcements that people don't really like to see especially with the recent one with season four saying that there will be no narrative event really just because they don't have the people there to make the content for it even though they had some unfinished work when it came to their trailers and things like that but wolves hunting in packs 3875 as now that halo infinite's multiplayer narrative is being cut and resources are going elsewhere what features do you think will be coming in the future that's a very good question because i don't really see anything like huge coming to halo infinite anytime soon or really ever i know we have that rumored battle royale to tonka mode that we've been talking about for over a year now but it seems like things are kind of in limbo when it comes to status of that according to leaks again that this game this game mode has never even been officially confirmed and i don't really think there are resources going elsewhere when it comes to this i think it's mainly because when the layoffs happened back in january of 2023 they just cut that team out they just let those people go it's not like they just took those people and moved them elsewhere. Microsoft just took them out of the company completely. I know in that tweet where the community director sketch said that they want to allow the team to breathe so they had to cut that out, that he didn't really say that they're reallocating sources. I think he meant the team as in 343 as a whole, the development team. They just didn't have the manpower to do it. And so that's why they just decided to not do it in the first place. Rather than fit a square within the circle, they just went like, you know what? It's a circle. We can't put a square in. But I do feel like the next big step we're going to have when it comes to Halo Infinite is likely going to be campaign AI in Forge. That's currently in development right now at 343. They've been working on it, I think, since like season two or season three, somewhere around there. So it's been close to a year and they know it's a highly requested feature to come into the game, which would be massive when it comes to content coming forward, which leads to these other leagues we've been seeing of Forge Firefight coming in where they can allow players to make their own firefight maps and their own firefight experiences against AI, which is sorely needed when it comes to Halo Infinite. They need some kind of PVE content that's repeatable, that's not tied to the campaign, that's I guess might have like some matchmaking mix in there or something like that. Recent leaks and rumors suggest that that will happen with season five, which would be awesome. Get a chance to play some firefight PVE content within Halo Infinite because while well, Halo Infinite's gameplay, I think is freaking awesome. It's just in desperate need of some content and they're pretty much gonna let the community have fun with it. And I wouldn't be surprised if we just start seeing 343 give more focus to Forge and try to lift that up as like a new form of content to be put into the game. Like basically let the community do the effort and 343 curates it and puts it into the game for people to play because we have so many amazing Forge creators within the community right now as a small community as it is that really you can just let the community run wild with it and be almost like mod content within Halo Infinite and have the community support the game, which I mean would be a super cost effective way in the way that Forge works right now. I mean, it kind of works out pretty well as a map creator and game mode editor. Though we know through more leaks and rumors that 343 is not relying on Forge completely for content. They definitely have plenty of dev maps to be brought into Halo Infinite. Though I don't really expect to see really any kind of crazy features from 343 happen. When it comes to 343 stuff, I'm expecting like new weapons, new equipment, maybe some new maps, and let the community create some crazy stuff to where 343 can curate that and then implement that into a matchmaking form. We've seen that so far with the community dev maps. We do know that they're doing that right now with the Husky Raid mode. They're kind of a bit of a map competition to see who can make the best Husky Raid map to make it into a playlist for people to play around. My biggest concern is the longevity of Halo Infinite and how long they're going to continue developing for this game. And we probably won't know more about that until about June 2024. But until then, we'll just have to hope for the best.